Pukeology podcast, where science meets your hilarious puke stories and the tips and tricks to stop that up chuckle that you need. You never know what's going to spew out of her mouth. Here's my mama, Dr. Puke Nemo. So is it even safe to have sex while being pregnant? Or have you heard that sex is better when you're pregnant? Get the answers to the most common sexy questions and learn how to have fun in this episode of Pregnancy Pucology Podcast, Episode 19, Sex During Pregnancy. Want no more morning sickness, pregnancy nausea, or how about no more headaches or migraines? Visit our sponsor, nomonausea.com, the only natural way to instantly stop your worst pregnancy nausea, vomiting, and headaches now. Or just place No More Nausea Ban on your baby registry for your delivery bag at Bye Bye Baby, or get it shipped in two days for free on Amazon as a prime vendor. And your little ones are always taken care of with the first Nomo Nausea kids at your local CVS store. Pregnancy humor that may just make you want to pee your pants, like you don't have to pee all the time, with hilarious puke stories like My Nose Made Me Do It, Frosting the Other White Stuff, Spit Don't Swallow. If you want to learn more about your pregnancy, humor and knowledge is the key to help you survive these nine months. And just know we're in this together. Today, you will learn the science behind how safe is sex during all stages of pregnancy, can sex induce labor, and a list of different sex positions you should try while you're pregnant. The Science of Puke, Pukeology. Well, Happy New Year to everyone, and let's start off this new year right. Let's talk about sex, baby. Okay, maybe I can't sing, but as a doctor, I really can tell you what's up when it comes to pregnancy during sex, and vice versa. So sex during pregnancy is absolutely 100% safe, um, as long as you are safe enough to be able to perform sex during your pregnancy. That is is the reason that our bodies were made for sex. And I say that because when we're pregnant, our our, our actual cervix starts to thicken. Our cervix is the lower end of the uterus that separates the uterus from the actual vaginal wall. So what obviously is the first line of defense and protection against the penis or any other um, foreign substance that's placed in there. So let's say that you are blank number of centimeters dilated. That's how we know your cervix is open. And so we usually measure that with, you know, finger breasts or finger distances. And this is whenever you end up delivering. So you're going to hear this word cervix and, you know, how many centimeters dilated you are. And that's really during delivery um, point of time. So get used to hearing that word. A mucus plug. Um, these, this is another form of protection. It is the mucus that coats the actual cervix to protect the baby, to make sure that there's no bacteria that gets in there. And you'll hear, oh, did your mucus plug fall out? Basically, they're saying a snot-like bloody looking thing. It pops out at the very end uh, prior to you delivering. So don't be freaked out if you literally looked like, um, I don't know, a bloody Charlotte's Web, you know, end up sneezing inside of your underwear. All right, and then um, after you talk about the bloody show, also known as the mucus plug, when it falls out, your water um, will start to break very quickly thereafter. So if you haven't already gotten to the hospital, make sure you do that. Your uterine muscles, they are muscles, ladies. So if you are sitting there at work and you're totally bored and you want to spice things up in your bedroom, start to do those Kegel muscles um, because your uterine muscles are a little different than the vaginal muscles like we're talking about. But uterine muscles are a muscle also. So the uterus is what is the organ that actually houses the baby, uh, which is known as the womb. And what happens is in order to get the baby out during delivery, it contracts and boom. And then the surrounding amniotic sac, um, the fourth item that does protect the baby is a membrane-filled fluid sac that acts as a cushion. So when people say, my water broke, that is the fluid that actually leaks out. So also warning, a lot of people come in 
uh, because they think that they peed themselves, but in reality, during labor, their water just broke, or that amniotic sac actually has been ruptured, and the baby is sure to come. It doesn't always rush out, so it can come out little by little. Um, just think of a, you know, a water balloon. If you pierce it with a pin, it's going to drip out slowly. If you take a knife to it and rip it, it's going to gush out like crazy. So during the final weeks of pregnancy, orgasms uh, will actually cause small little contractions of the uterus and could potentially induce labor. Please speak with your OBGYN or midwife if you are about to pop and you have more sex questions. But I'm just going to kind of go through all of the different things that you know that we're all thinking about, uh, especially during sex, which is happens to be one of my favorite topics. I was begging my husband to have sex um, once the baby was full term because I wanted her out. This is me personally. Um, I was up for anything in order to induce labor. Just remember, if your mucus plug has fallen out, please do not have sex. Uh, If your water has broke, please don't have sex because you could potentially be introducing bacteria. But anything there before it, go for it. You might actually end up contracting away and getting that baby out faster than you had initially anticipated. So I also giggle because I've heard this in the past. Uh, Please don't have sex on the way to the hospital Um, if you are contracting to try to get your mind off things because there are different risks um, that are, you know, with it, especially if you are during labor. But any other time that you want to spice up your sex life and try very weird positions inside the car, go for it. Remember, this is the beauty of how you and your husband uh, got into this situation. And again, you guys are about to be experiencing a full life ahead of you with your brand new baby. Um, another thing that you need to remember that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about is breastfeeding is not an absolute form of birth control. So you might get pregnant again. Uh, you hear those old wives tales that you can't get pregnant if you're breastfeeding. Definitely not true. I have a few friends that have Irish twins. Um, so again, make sure that you are always being cognizant. If you want another baby, well then go for it. Is pregnancy sex different than regular sex? Yes and no. Your body is pumped with so many type of hormones, ladies. There's extra blood flow and there's energy consumption by that growing baby. And it can take a lot out of a woman. Um, The blood flow is great because it causes a heightened sense of sensitivity down there. So your clit actually might get engorged, making oral sex feel even better than usual. The action of sex is the same. But how you feel about the way you think your partner looks at you might be different. Men, I always say, come in two different forms. One who wants more sex because they find pregnancy so ridiculously attractive and because, let's face it, they can't get you pregnant again. Um, And the second is those who don't want to have sex because they're afraid of hurting the baby. Ladies, remember, it has nothing to do with you. It's not that they don't find you attractive and things like that. It's because they have a fear of what they're going to be doing to their unborn child. Ultimately, you should feel sexy uh, regardless of how many extra pounds you have of curves, I like to say, and you should know that you are always being desired. There is nothing wrong with pleasuring yourself also to get your sex drives to come out. Uh, You'll probably orgasm actually harder and quicker. So does a woman's libido change during pregnancy? A lot of times I get asked this question. Many women state that a low sexual desire happens during their first trimester, but it's because of all of the ugh state that you feel like, right? The morning sickness that can sometimes be all day sickness, the feeling tired, having to pee all the time. And if you want to know a little bit more about what causes this morning sickness or the reason behind your frequent urination, like why you have to pee all the freaking time, go check out Pregnancy Pucology Podcast, episode four and episode 11. Both have some great helpful hints um, and home remedies to stop that upset stomach before it starts. Or you can just go visit our sponsor, nomonausea.com. Um, that is doctor recommended and can naturally stop your morning sickness in seconds using essential oils and acupressure in a wristband. So 
so that you can get back on that horse, wink, wink, or save a horse, ride a cowboy, and have sex again and enjoy it again. Because remember, your libido uh, comes back full force, right, in the second trimester. And I know I personally was even hornier than usual, and all I wanted was sex all the time during my third trimester. I felt good. Um, I was was ready to go, I guess you could say. Um, so you also have to remember that how each of the trimesters will change the way that makes you feel. I read a really great book recently. It's called Girl, Wash Your Face. And it explained it best about the way that your husband looks at you, regardless if you have an extra couple pounds of curves or not. Um, and they said to you know, feel comfortable in your own skin, no matter how much weight you've gained. And ultimately, men, you take off your clothes and what do they see? Boobies! Growing up on a Tuesday? One puke story. Ah, ah, ah. Yesterday, I had the day off, so I planned a romantic evening with my hubby, being recently pregnant. I got the usual morning sickness that turned into all-day sickness super quickly. I threw up so hard, I gave myself a bloody nose, which then made me throw up again and again and again. By the time my husband got home, he saw the beautiful candles sitting around, and then he looks at me and asked if I was taking up MMA fighting while he was at work because of my puffy eyes and bloody nose. I'm so over my first trimester. Thanks, Thomp Rose, T-H-O-N-P-R-O-S-E, for that hilarious bloody nose puke story. My BFF and I were talking about pregnancy sex since we're both pregnant together. What's changed, what's gotten better, and just when it was getting nice and steamy, she texted me um, to let me know that she was eating frosting straight out of the container. I thought, she thought that I would be super proud. I vomited almost immediately just thinking about it. And I freaking love frosting. <laughs> the after catch. Thanks a lot for that hilarious puke story. I have to say, when you talk to your best friend, nothing can stop you from the conversation except maybe the thought of eating out of straight out of a can. This weekend, I was feeling frisky. And was safely able to give my husband a BJ that I haven't done in months due to morning sickness, of course. As soon as I was done with the morning surprise from him, uh, I went to go brush my teeth. I threw up because I waited too long to spit while brushing my teeth. It's the second time that this has happened. I had to clean it all off the wall and then I started crying because I'm an adult and really should have my shit together better than that said every single woman, I'm sure, in their first trimester. Thank you every other time for that hilarious puke story. Do you have a funny puke story that you cannot wait to share with me? Please send it to me. Pukeology, P-U-K-E-O-L-O-G-Y, at nomonasia.com, N-O-M-O-N-A-U-S-E-A.com. Again, that's pukeology at nomonasia.com, or just tweet us at pukeology so we can all have a hilarious laugh. <laughs> Tips and tricks to stop the up chuckle that you need. Ladies, let's be real. Normal sex positions may be a little uncomfortable during sex while you're pregnant because you have a beautiful bump in the way. But you are sexy at every single stage of pregnancy. So use those extra curves that God gave you strategically. Your boobs are probably rocking. So buy some sexy low-cut lingerie. On a personal note, my husband thought I was going to get like great porn star boobs. Um, but to both of our dismays, I had an A cup during my pregnancy, after my pregnancy, and even during breastfeeding. So it doesn't always happen the way that you envision it. Uh, don't be upset if your boobs don't 
quote unquote come in if you're part of the little itty bitty titty committee like me, um, you'll still be able to produce milk because again, it doesn't matter the size of the breast, it matters your mammary glands. So how much uh, the prolactin, how much of the hormone and how much um, you will be able to share with your baby all based upon science of the body and not size. So it's the other S. Most of you will have a real nice, thick, juicy booty, aka a Kim K booty, during your pregnancy. If you're lucky, you'll keep your curves and embrace your new Kardashian look. So buy some cute little naughty rompers, right? Like, so the ones that are naughty 90s that are cute, still able to be used, but Again, they're loose in the tummy and then they show off your booty. So show off the parts that make you feel good and sexy. But here are my personal four sex positions that I loved because of the fact that number one, I felt like it gave me a good angle. Number two, it was perfect because I was comfortable being able to cradle um, the baby. And number three, it was awesome because my husband got to see how excited that I was during sex all over again. Number one, straddle him if he's in a chair. If you have a desk as a prop, it's even better. You could do the whole little role-playing, whole boss employee thing. Um, That really will get them revving to go and rolling. Although you are on top, he will still have that dominance aspect. Like He will still love that feeling of being bossed around because you control the frequency, so how many pumps, (laughs) Um, and you will also control how deep he ends up going. Um, Because again, sometimes you can take, sometimes during the month you can actually take more, other times you can't, Um, but you want to make sure that you, even if you do have that knocking feeling, that you kind of rotate and move your hips um, to get accustomed to the penis because, right, like just like a fingerprint, every man's penis is shaped a little differently and every woman's G-spot is, you know, either up and to the left or down and to the right or whatever that may be. So tilt your hips the way that it makes you feel best, making sure that the actual office chair is all the way down so that you can use your leg muscles. So don't just dangle there like you'd be on Santa's lap or something. Number two, genuine Tata's ride it. That pony. I don't know why I'm singing so much today. (laughs) All right. Get up on it, cowgirl, and straddle him while he's lying on his back. Um, That will take the weight off of your stomach, and you can control the penetration. Set the pace in this position. Another is what I like to call, and this is in the same category, but a reverse cowgirl. It is the same idea or aspect. You can either do it where you are straddling him faced away from him or... You can do it if you think of yourself as almost like a little garden gnome where your feet are in between his legs and you're bouncing up and down like a little pogo stick. Both highly recommended positions. Um, Again, if you are not very far along, you might feel like facing him is much more intimate. Number three. The cuddler. We all know this position as it's early morning, just roll over and have sex with me position. Um, With him cuddled behind you, again, you both are on your sides. This became my favorite position um, to avoid deep penetration during my last trimester. I explained it to him like this. I have enough stuff inside of me. Too much of you is not a cherry on top. You guys understand that the sideways position, if you want to get a little bit more creative, you can do the the sideways scissor, right? So instead of him laying down, he can be in between your legs with one leg nicely, gently propped up on his shoulder, and you guys can kind of do this different scissor technique. Sometimes I kind of wish that this podcast was aired um, virtually where you can actually see because I am literally doing the scissor position with my hands to try to be able to explain it to you guys. And then number four, actually there are five of them, pardon me. Uh, Number four, the birthing modified birthing position. So with your legs bent and hiked up, lay on the bed, like lay at the edge of the bed. Um, Your legs will literally be up as though you were giving birth. Um, If you're in your third trimester, please don't lay on your back flat. Make sure that you have what's called right uterine displacement. Um, Put a pillow underneath of your right side. 
And again, you your uterus itself will end up moving over uh, to avoid both your you know, your aorta and also the, the venous compression. So your two big vessels that supply blood to you, you don't want to compress both of them with your very heavy tummy. Um, in this position, have either you or your partner between your legs, like either standing or kneeling, or you can modify this position off to the side with your right foot kind of resting on his shoulder, kind of like that scissor technique. Only difference is, is he's off the bed and you're on the, the bed. Trust me, this one hits the spot. And number five, Snoop Doggy. Dog. Okay, doggy style. Again, I'm in the singing mood. Depends on how big your belly actually is. Uh, this may or may not work. I personally felt the sexiest here because all he could see was my little waist. No belly was visible. And I would prop up pillows underneath um, my tummy and on my elbows so that... You can kind of be on your hands or on the elbows and almost like a yoga cat cow position, but I felt super sexy like this. He can look at my, you know, Latin thick booty and be able to enjoy this position for all of its beauty and what it's worth. Remember, every G spot is different, just like every penis that we talked about with different types of curves. So get creative. The only big takeaway is don't lie flat on your back during your second and third trimester. Make sure that you are propping your uterus um, to one side and enjoy it because you can't get pregnant again. So go ahead, get buck wild, enjoy sex during pregnancy. And in accordance with the season, like we said, you can't get pregnant again. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow, and boys, let it go. Now that you know the science behind sex during pregnancy, you know that it is safe. Ultimately, we gave you the answers that you were looking for. What are those best sex positions? How late is considered pregnancy due to that date? And again, why do I not feel as though I am sexy? So please, ladies, the takeaway is we're all in this together. If you love Pregnancy Pucology podcasts, let us know. Give us a five-star rating or hearts for likes. Don't forget to download this episode, but more importantly, share with all of your prego friends. Thanks again for listening to Pucology Podcast and Pregnancy, Sex During Pregnancy, Episode 19, and share it. Thank you guys and have a wonderful new year. Pucology Podcasts edutainment at its finest.